Hey everyone, uh, this is Laura from Plumer, and today I'm really excited to share with you uh, this uh, walkthrough on our LLM-based application and how you can deploy it on Plumer Cloud. Uh, I'd like to start off by sharing some information on what Plumer Cloud is. Uh, Plumer Cloud is a platform that allows you to easily deploy your Python-based applications. Um, we cover a wide variety of different formats, including um, Streamlit, uh, Dash, uh, Solara, Panel, Voila, uh, FastAPI, among others. If you'd like to take a look at some of our documentation, uh, you can visit us through our platform.plumer.io a platform where you can create an account and sign in um, in terms of the pricing model that we're currently running. So we offer three different options. We have a free or community option that allows you to have two apps running at a time. Um, with this one, this is a great opportunity or great uh, option if you're looking to um, get started with the platform and try it out. We then have professional $10 a month, which allows you to have 10 apps cur currently. And this option is great if you're seeking to have a hosted portfolio, say, for example, if you are a job seeker or a consultant and you would like to have your Python based or LLM based applications running and ready for demo. I think this is a great opportunity or great option to have if you're a, a consultant or a business owner that that is looking to deploy applications for others. This is also an or an option sorry, that that might be of interest. And then if you're seeking to scale up, then uh, we're more than happy to chat with you about enterprising options. Today, uh, the focus for me is going to be talking about, um, uh, for me to be talking about uh, how to deploy and develop an LLM-based API. And in this particular example, what I have here is an API that is built through the, the use of uh, retrieval augmented generation in which I have a knowledge base and I have a large language model that can answer questions about the knowledge base. In this case, my goal was to try out building a RAC system from uh, tabular data and then to deploy the service as, a, as an API. The purpose of this is my API has the format or can act as the backend for a chatbot. So in my case, the data contains information on purchases, and orders. So if I wanted to provide customer support in terms of you know what orders, uh, what the status of an order is, the cost, the items, et cetera, this is one, one application of this, this specific um, app. Um, in terms of the app itself, so we have here some sample data that we have provided it. So we can ask questions in natural language, you know, what is the total cost for an order uh, with a specific order number? Once we I've deployed the application on Plumer Cloud, I can make a curl command against it. So if you have a JavaScript based application, you can just make queries to this API and then to try it out and or sort of to see what we get. So for instance, uh, one of the key things that I focused on for this particular application is the LLM's ability to respond to instructions and also reason. So for instance, if I ask it to tell me the total cost for an order with a specific invoice number, the LLM not, not should only not be able to correctly identify the um, uh, items purchased, but it should also identify the cost per unit, the total number of units, and then the total, and then uh, take the total sum of these when performing uh, when performing the calculation. Um, in terms of how this is built, so I'm going to go ahead and share with you the code behind it, and then how you can deploy this on Plumer Cloud. So in here, I have a GitHub repository called github.com plumer forward slash doc. And in here, we have different examples for coding-based applications that you can build and deploy with Python and LLMs. Of course, we're not just focused on building with LLMs, but for this video, I'll focus on this one. Uh, so this, this is the application that I just showed you, the sample data, the questions. So let's take a look at the code here. So in here, I have a Docker file. Uh, this is what I use to package my application. I have my, my app. This contains the code for the API. I have my pipeline helper. Uh, this specific set of code is just building the RAG pipeline behind the scenes. And then I just built a small test to see how well the LLM based pipeline does. So if I go take a look at the pipeline helper, I have a few key functions. I'll just uh, minimize these. So I have, I have four main functions inside this pipeline helper 
uh, script. The first, of course, is I want to read and clean the CSV. And then I want to transform the data so that instead of being just a CSV, it's going to be a data structure that is uh, compatible with Haystack. In this case, Haystack is a Python, Python open source package that acts as an LLM orchestrator, similar to Langchain or Llama Index. And so for this one, I've built my logic using uh, Haystack by DeepSet. So in this case, I'm going to transform the content of this data frame into a data structure that is compatible with Haystack document object. This is going to make it easier for me to then store it onto a document store, and then I can initialize a pipeline that reads the documents from the document store and incorporates an LLM. So let's take a look at the first function. In here, I just have a function that, that reads a specific data set and then returns a dictionary. That's all I'm really doing. I'm only getting rid of uh, empty customer IDs and just ensuring that all column names are lowercase. That's that for this function. For the documents, so one of the key assumptions that I have is that the document needs to be of type a dictionary and the haystack document object contains a few specific fields. There's content, there's ID, and there's metadata. So for this content one, I basically concatenated a dictionary or rather I concatenated a string containing the information from, from the corresponding to one row. And then I annotated it with the individual metadata uh, each metadata field does one of the key fields in the data data structure. Uh, from there, once I have my collection of documents into a list, I can then generate or populate an in-memory document store. In this case, I'm not going to be embedding any of the information. I'm simply going to be using the BM25 um, algorithm for retrieval. So I'm just going to go ahead and save the content of the documents in the document store. And then the pipeline is a little longer. So the pipeline is going to take us input the populated document store. And depending on the LLM provider that you're working with, you might need to provide a key. I'm working with OpenAI. A Haystack provides a number of access points, including um, Amazon, Bedrock, Azure, um, uh, Google Cloud, sorry, Google Vertex AI, if you're working with uh, larger cloud providers, if you're working with something like Hacking Phase, Quad, sorry, Hacking Phase, uh, Olama, you can also incorporate those in here. And then in here, the context of the or the, the content of the pipeline is just going to really be made from my prompt builder, the retriever that is going to take a sample of the document store, the LLM. And then in here, I'm just connecting the different elements in the pipeline. So I um in this case, what I'm looking at is a typical haystack workflow where I will initialize at uh, the, the components. So each of these uh, classes right here correspond to a component. Components are just classes that perform specific functions within LLM powered pipelines. So this prompt builder, for example, is taking as input uh, this prompt template, which is essentially just a set of instructions that the LLM should be the LLM should be using. In this case, we are given the LLM a specific role. The role is to uh, obtain information or a question from, from the user and then answer questions relevant to the documents. The LLM is instructed to as answer questions about the order of the product. And uh, we just need to ensure that the LLM is given the invoice number, the stock code of the date of purchase. Uh, we, are, we are given the LLM uh, detailed instructions on what to do when asked for specific things, such as the total number of orders, sorry, total number, total number of items in an order, total price, and whether orders can be canceled. And then for the context in here, we are essentially just uh, creating this template that iterates through the different documents in our document storm. This has access to the metadata. So then I connect the, com the components through the use of the pipeline and I just return the prediction pipeline. So through this, I'm going to be able to be making inferences relative just to my, my system and not, not anything else. Uh, for the API itself, in this case, I'm working with Fast API and Pydantic. And in here, I just, I'm just making imports for my functions from the pipeline helper. Uh, this is just a doc string for the, the documentation. And then in here, it's a fairly simple application. I am just loading any environment file that has my key. I initialize the application, initialize the models. I then load my, um, my pipeline functions. And then from here, I only have two methods. I have a get method that's just the root. And then I have a post method 
that is going to take as input the user question in, in natural language. And then uh, in here, I have my prediction pipeline uh, that is going to execute you know, uh, with the question in mind. And this question is just going to go ahead and be populated within the prompt template. The LLM then retrieves the information and then returns the response. And that's it. Um, that's it in terms of the application. Now to deploy this uh, through something like Plumer Cloud, it's very, very simple. So in here, the first thing is we want to create an API key. So I could go to my account and in there I have the option to create a key. So if I go right here, we'll go to the sign up page, we confirm our email and that's it. Uh, to get a key, we would go to the platform uh, page, we go to account, we ask for a new key, we copy and paste, that's it. And then to initiate the process of deploying, all we have to do is install Plumer Cloud, connect our key through the command Plumer Cloud, Cloud Key, followed by our API key. We can initialize the app and then we can deploy. So in here, I have a very simple example where uh, I have already initialized my application. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit deploy. So that is just going to go ahead and create this app with an ID.zip. It's going to go ahead and deploy the project. It's going to give me my ID, com violet, and then I can go see the progress. So if I go back here to Plumer Cloud and I go to my applications and refresh, I can now see here that my app is currently in the building stage. Uh, so that's it for today's walkthrough. Uh, to find out more information about you know, the sample projects, you can visit us on GitHub at uh, github.com forward slash plumer forward slash doc, and then go to examples and then pick up one of our many examples. If you'd like to get up and running with, uh, with deploying applications, we have prepared quite a bit of documentation in terms of you know, the basic bare bones structure for your applications of different formats. We support Flask, Fast API, Streamlit, Wallace, Lara, Panel, Chainlit, Gradio, Shiny Python, Shiny Express, and recently we've added Dash uh, support as well. We support Docker applications and Chocket. Um, in terms of the overview, just as a final, a final um, a review, we currently support three different plans, a community plan that is free of charge, a Plumber Cloud Professional starting at $10 a month, and then Plumber Cloud Enterprise, um, uh, which it, it, it can be more customized to your needs. So uh, I look forward to seeing you in our next um, Plumor app walkthrough deployment session, and I wish you a great rest of your day.